Hi there, I'm Mike Cerrone, and uh, you're in the right place if you're here for the referral mastermind call. Today, we're going to talk about the power combo. It's going to be real good stuff. I'm uh, real excited to have you here, so make sure you got uh, pencil and paper ready to take some notes. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to pull up some slides here and give this just a second. Uh, cool. Hopefully, you'll be see you're seeing my screen right now. Are they seeing the screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. They are seeing the, the blue, the screen. Um, no. No, no. <laughs> let, me, let me fix that. I think I messed that up. Let's try again. And there you go. Now you should be seeing my screen. <laughs> you take a couple weeks off, you forget everything. All right, so let's, let's get back into it. Uh, excited to have you here. Uh, again, today we're going to talk about uh, the power combo, combining mass marketing with the personal touch and doing that through events, parties, giveaways, contests, these types of things, going to be a great call. All right. So the big question is this. Uh, first of all, a fact, uh, client events, including parties, contests, and giveaways are the ideal referral power combo because they combine level two mass marketing with level Three, the personal touch into one simple approach. Uh, and the questions are, why do events? That we're going to answer that today. How do you do it right? And what are some of the most popular events? So if that's what you want to learn, you're in the right place. Now, on the last call, we talked about level three, uh, A category leads and the personal touch uh, where you plus it up with your time. We talked about that plan and then how it can double your referrals. We also reviewed objectives, mediums, and examples, and we looked at seven different approaches. Uh, if you missed that call, be sure to watch the last referral mastermind call replay, and you can find that right where you are today. All right. So uh, again, hi, I'm real excited to chat with you today. We're in the referral mastermind call, and I'm your host, Mike Cerrone, and the format of this mastermind is simple. At the beginning, I'll be sharing a new referral idea or concept for a few minutes, and then we're going to open it up for Q&A, comments, and brainstorming. So as we're talking, feel free to type in questions that you may have into the chat or the comments section or ideas or answers as we go along. And your question is going to be about this topic or anything related to real estate agent referrals from past clients and sphere of influence. All right, before we start, a quick 20-second announcement. This call is being sponsored by Referral Masters, the Referral Masters group inside of eXp Realty. However, we are not going to talk about Referral Masters or eXp Realty on this call. If you have questions about the Referral Masters group or eXp Realty after this call, go back to the agent who invited you to join us today and tell them that you would like to learn more. All right, now back to the show. As uh, folks uh, that have watched our show before know, this is the Inspirational Minute. Uh, we like to start off with a quick story that answers the question, do referral-based real estate practices really work? And our Inspirational Agent of the Day is luxury agent Jenny Ames. <clears throat> Jenny closed 111 transactions in one year with a total sales volume ready, 141 million. That is some big volume and an average price of 1.2 million. All right. So she is a luxury agent. 64% of her business is by direct referral. What we're talking about here, repeating referral. And the rest is by networking and networking groups, which is kind of just another form of referrals, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, she likes to do that with charities and social groups. It works very well for her. Uh, to meet a lot of luxury clients. All right, Ginny's success in her success call, she shares uh, how she intentionally moved herself into that luxury market and how you may be able to do the same. So if that's something of interest to you, you should want to check that out. Uh, and also, it, this proves, by the way, doesn't it, that referral-based real estate practices really do work and can work for super high volume and in the luxury market as well. If you want to hear Ginny's full story, just listen to Success Calls podcast number 128 and just go to mastermindagent.com to look that up. All right. So let's get back into our hot topic. The hot topic today are client events. And these include parties, 
contests, giveaways. Uh, they're the ideal referral, what I call the power combo, because they combine level two mass marketing with level three personal touch into one approach. And they have a ton of advantages we're going to go through. So we're going to talk about why do the events, how to do it right, and what are some of the most popular events. Now, going back to our concept we've been working on for the last uh, multiple times together, we've got these three levels of engagement, right? Let's walk through this real fast. Level one at the bottom in the red, that is, these are your category C leads. These folks are people that are neutral. And what I mean by that is you don't know whether they would repeat, whether they would refer business to you or do business with you. They haven't done business in the past. You, you just don't know. You have no clue where they're at. So they go into level one and they get a base automatic digital marketing plan. Then we move up to the orange. That's level two. These are your B category leads. These folks, as a reminder, are people who they haven't done a business with you. They haven't hired you. They haven't sent you a referral yet, but you're pretty sure they would if you were to ask them and to get in front of them multiple times. So you have a pretty good feeling about them. It's kind of a gut feeling. They're going to be in a mass marketing program where you're reaching out to them. We've gone through that in the past. Check out those prior episodes. But let's go up to level three, right? Level three is the green at the top there. And we're talking now about A category leads. These folks are people who have hired you or have referred you or both. And these are most likely to do that again. They're most likely to hire you again or send you a referral. So we really want to take good care of them. And that's why they're in the personal touch category. What we're going to do now is we're going to talk about a way, an advanced technique that you can combine those two. So uh, again, in this call, this, this idea of this advanced, uh, this technique or this combo technique where we go into client events. And again, they include parties, contests, giveaways. And it's why I call it the power combo because it combines that level two mass marketing with level three personal touch. So let's go into what is an event, okay? An event in our definition, a client event, and we're talking about clients, past clients or future clients, uh, is when you bring people in your PCSOI, uh, your past clients and sphere of influence tribe together, either physically or virtually, right? We've learned to do that over the last couple of years and then it works effectively to do it as virtually if that's what's required. Um, most have historically been done physically, but virtual works as well. Now, the whole purpose of the event is to celebrate or celebrating this connection, this relationship with you. <laughs> okay, you're the center of attention. You are the bond that connects all these people in this group together. Um, and in the old days, when I got into real estate, people were doing these things 30 some years ago. Uh, but at that time, they called them client appreciation parties, we typically did it once a year. It was a big gala. It was a big event. Uh, and it was showing appreciation, appreciation to the people who had helped you to get where you were. And that still holds true today. You're showing appreciation for these people that are in your world. They're connecting you. They're either currently supporting your business or you think that they will and you want to give them uh, a reward for helping you out. All right. And so that's the idea of these events. Now, why do top, top agents, why have they jumped into this? As I mentioned 30 years ago, you might do one event a year. Very few agents were doing it. It was usually a big extravaganza. And since then, over the last 10 years, it's really morphed into a lot of smaller, uh, less expensive events uh, multiple times throughout the year. And top agents have really embraced them. And the question is, why? Why are they doing that? And here are a couple of reasons. Number one is gratitude. So events give you the opportunity to love on, to love on your people. That, that came from one of the top agents we've heard it from. In fact, several top agents have used this term. It was really odd to me initially, but to love on your people. And once I heard it more and more, it makes complete sense to me. So it's this idea of gratitude. Second are multiple contacts. And this is one of the very powerful parts of this and reasons to do it. It's a great way to get to your 33 annual touch with your PCSOI. People always ask, how am I gonna to touch my people so often? That sounds crazy to go out to them 33 times a year. Well, you're gonna do it through different mediums and for different purposes so that it doesn't seem repetitive 
uh, to the person on the other end who's receiving all these contacts. And so events help you with this. Uh, in fact, if you do a, for instance, if you do an event, typically you're going to make four to six contacts, touch points with that individual. Uh, you're going to mail them an invitation. You're going to email them an invite. You're going to phone invite them. Okay, so we got three already. You got a reminder text for those who either haven't signed up yet or are ready for their RSVP. The event itself is a real big, awesome face-to-face -face connection. Then you've got the post-event pictures that you'll put out on social media kind of as a wrap-up. Well, that's another contact. So if you host, say, four events per year, one per quarter, you're already up to 24 contacts in a year. If you added a monthly newsletter as an example, all of a sudden you're at 36. So you can see why the top agents have really embraced events and doing them multiple times a year. And there are more benefits. We haven't even hit all of them. Third is it's easy. It's, it's a non-salesy reason to reach out and contact your people, right? Instead of calling up and saying, hey, this is my, hey, John, this is Mike, how you doing? Uh, I just want to uh, touch base and see if, have you thought about moving in the next 30 days? Do you know anybody who's thinking about buying or selling real estate in the next 60 days? These work. It's just that they get repetitive, both for you and for the person on the other end of the phone receiving the call. And so events give you multiple reasons and various reasons to call up and invite somebody to an event, which is a much easier discussion and conversation. Now, fourth is the law of reciprocity. Law of reciprocity. When you give someone something, they want to give you something back in return. It's kind of in our nature that we don't like to owe people anything. So uh, if you give somebody something, they want to give it back. Good example is, uh, I don't know if you remember, if you're old enough, but the Harry Krishners that would be out there at the uh, airports and they'd walk up to you and hand you a, a cheap flower, <laughs> hand you a flower. Like, Why are they doing that? It's because of the law of reciprocity. If they give you something, then you feel obligated to give them something back, maybe five minutes of your time to listen to them talk about what they're doing. So that's the idea of reciprocity, and you want to use that to your advantage as well. The events create that. All right, what is the most powerful reason to do the event? Well, the number one most powerful reason to host events is this. It's the invitation. People make a common mistake, especially people who haven't done events before. They think it's the event itself, and the event itself is powerful, but more, more powerful and a bigger reach is the invitation when you go out and ask people to join you. Because what you're doing is you're asking people to become part of your inner circle. Uh, and everybody wants to be part of the inner circle, part of the group, uh, part of the in-group, the click, and importantly, your group, your click, your niche, your combination of people that you like to have in your sphere. They wanna be there. So even if they can't attend, they have this appreciation for you at a deep emotional level, whether they attend or not. It's that invitation. It's that, that ask uh, to have them come and be part of what you're doing. And that's, again, something that people miss is it's not the attendance. All the, the attendance is awesome. It's fun. It's great. It's even deeper connection. But the invitation itself wins points. So don't be afraid to make those invitations. And the other thing is this. Invite everyone on your list. It's another mistake people make, especially at their first event or even their second. They don't want to invite everyone because they're scared everyone's going to say yes. Well, the actual fact is that everybody is not going to say yes. Typically, only a small percentage of the people will accept your invitation, only 10 to 20 percent. But all of the people you invite are going to be touched. Now, why do only 10 or 20% accept? Well, they have other things going on in their life. They have something else already happening that date, or they can't make the drive, or they're sick, or whatever. They have something else going on that they cannot attend, but they all appreciate that you asked. And that's why you should reach out and ask everyone. All right, let's talk uh, about some types of events. Uh, start getting your brain uh, uh, brainstorming, get yourself flowing in, in the, the mindset of what these things are or can be. There are three main types of events. There are parties, there are contests, and there are giveaways, right? Parties, you get a lot of people together. They get all excited. Uh, you have some kind of theme to the party uh, to get them going. We're going to go through examples in a minute. Contests are you ask people to do to participate in some way. 
uh, say, uh, uh, we gave an example here of a Halloween costume contest, right? So they send in pictures of their favorite costume and either you, or if you're on Facebook, you can have your group vote on which costume is the best. The winner gets a prize. It gets a lot of participation when you go into contests. People like to do them. And for you, it's great because they're really low budget. Uh, giveaways are kind of in that same category. Uh, you could just have a, a pure raffle situation. And by the way, if you do raffles, make sure you check with your state. Uh, make sure you're complying with laws. Every state is different. But typically, if you don't charge for it, we're not recommending you do, then you can do these drawings uh, for a prize. So uh, people just say, hey, I want to be part of this. You put their name into a hat or into a, a spreadsheet and you do a computer generated drawing one or the other and you pop out an answer and that person wins a prize. Um, people love that kind of stuff, especially when they didn't have to pay anything to participate. All right, so these events, they can be small with, you could just have a, a little gathering in your house, a little barbecue or a dinner of say two to five or six people. Uh, they could be large, you could have hundreds. Some of these people have hundreds and hundreds of people that show up to their events. Uh, that would be pretty big. I wouldn't recommend that on your first shot. Uh, but they could also be any size in between. You could have 10, 20, 30, 40 people involved uh, all the way up or down. Um, you can even have, by the way, it's it almost to the point where you could just have a lunch with somebody. And that, in a way, is an event, isn't it? Uh, but let's we keep moving. All right. Expensive. It could be very expensive or super cheap or some of them are even free if that's what you need to do for your budget. And people want to come and join you because they want to be part of your inner circle. So let's go through a couple of examples of events that I've heard from top agents in the past. This is not an all-inclusive list. It's just a, a list to get you started and again, get your brainstorm and get you thinking about what's out there. Number one is the Pi Day giveaway. Uh, that's where you offer a pie to folks on your list. You, typically, it happens before Thanksgiving and, uh, and it's a great way for you to meet them and have a pie that they can then share and celebrate with their family. Uh, also, you could do, we mentioned the Halloween costume contest. It's great for Halloween. Uh, and it's also awesome if you have a Facebook, Instagram page, something out there on social media where you can share the results. And even better, if you can have people participate in the voting. Next, we got pictures with Santa. The way this works is uh, that, say, three or four weeks, maybe even in November, you have a Santa Claus with a Christmas tree and a chair somewhere. And you set this up so that your, your families can come in, have their kids sit on their lap or just stand and get a picture with Santa. They can get that picture, digital picture. You give it to them. They can take that, put it out on their social media. They can send it out in their Christmas cards as the cover. It's pretty cool. Uh, and a lot of people really enjoy it. I get a lot of good feedback on that one as well. Here's another one. I love you a latte. Love you a latte. So uh, basically, the idea is to go have a gathering at a coffee shop, a, a latte, and, uh, and a lot of people like to do that. They like to join and kind of mingle. You can either pay for the coffee or they can pay for their own, and you can provide a gift or not, it's, but you can get a little celebration going. It's a great event to get people excited to come together. You can do a Valentine's date night in a box, right? Uh, this is one of our top agents does this. Uh, each year, he says it's wonderful. He basically puts together all these uh, pre-made pizzas and a bottle of uh, Pepsi, and people can come over and pick it up at his office that night, and they kind of have a pre-made dinner and date night all put together. They can watch a movie uh, together. That's the kind of the concept, and he says it works really great. Uh, also, you could do a 4th of July barbecue in the park. All right, we've got some people that do this. They'll They'll have everything from just a simple barbecue all the way up to people who do big bouncy houses and horseshoes and uh, uh, sack races and all kinds of things that they do to entertain people and their kids. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, then also we got movie in the park. For instance, that could be a free one. If you've got a facility, if they're around you, they do movies in the park where people just come by and throw out a blanket and watch a movie on the grass that's kind of a neat way to bring people together as well. You've got dinner theater. So you could go watch one of these dinner theaters, buy, say, five or 10 or 20 tickets, whatever you want to do. And you invite people. Remember, only X number of people show up and uh, you invite people to join you and you have a nice gathering. And it's always good to break bread with people. 
uh, that always deepens the relationship. And then you got movie day uh, at a theater. That's something that's kind of a bigger event. You rent out a whole room of a movie theater and you show a movie at the time that you select. It's usually early on a Saturday morning uh, or a Sunday morning before the theater gets really busy. It's usually a family movie so that the kids can show up. Uh, Disney's always a good one. Um, and that's that creates a lot of fun and excitement, especially because the kids are involved with that as well. Then you got uh, King Cake Testing. This tasting, King Cake Tasting. This is a, a very unique thing to one of our folks. Uh, she's down in Louisiana, and they, uh, they're around Mardi Gras time. They do these things called King Cakes, which are these unique cakes that all these people like to put together. And what she does is she purchases a bunch from different uh, outlets. She brings them together in one place and lets everybody taste. And then she indicates where she got the cake from. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a great, enjoyable event. Uh, also, kind of in that same uh, li line of thought is a cookie tasting um, get together with a recipe swap. So in this idea, everybody... Uh, Bakes off, say, a dozen cookies or more. Uh, you tell them how many. They bring together. You put it on a table. And next to each person's cookie basket, you have a recipe card. So you make a bunch of recipe cards with copies. And people can taste the cookie. If they like it, they can take the recipe home. And it becomes theirs that they can share with their family. Very popular. You can uh, plus that up with uh, cookie decorating for the kids. All kinds of cool little things there. Uh, you could do a bingo night. Everybody goes and they enjoy a bingo. You, you buy some cards and you get to stick together and you have a little fun seeing who can win bingo. Uh, you can also do sports tickets giveaways. Uh, this is a very popular one where you buy, say, season tickets or just one-time event. Uh, but season tickets is a popular one where you either do a major sports program or even minor or even high school or the college. It, it's whatever is popular in your area or whatever you enjoy would work well also. And you get the tickets and you call up and you just hand them out and you just keep calling until you get X number, the tickets disappear. And usually it's uh, a lot more people than you think. So to give away two tickets, you might have to call 10 people. Well, that's now 10 touches that you made. So you get the idea there. It's another great one uh, to do at, uh, an event. All right. So hopefully this has got your mind cooking, right? You probably have thought of some other ideas. If you have, put them in the comments section. Are you doing events that we've either listed or events we haven't listed or ideas you thought of? Go ahead and let us know what you're thinking of. This is a mastermind. Love to get your, your input and feedback on it. Um, oh, another one I, I forgot was the river cruise. <laughs> this is a big elaborate one. You get one of those river cruise boats, uh, where they have the meals on them. And we have a gal, she did a, a seven course meal. It was a big cruise boat. It had a dancing thing in the middle and a bar and people are having a blast and they go out for a couple hours. And it's kind of like a nightclub on the water. A pretty great idea and, uh, and a lot, a lot of fun. We get a lot of good uh, reciprocal uh, happiness, right? All right, so what is the most common event what is the most common event that people like to do? And, and one that they usually do first, you don't have to do this first, but it's one they like to start with because it's kind of easy conceptually. And that is the Pi Day giveaway. The Pi Day giveaway, the way it works is, first of all, it's easy to set up, but the way you do it is you invite your PCSOI, your past clients and sphere of influence to pick up a fresh pie two days before Thanksgiving. They can also do it, by the way, on March 14th right? Because that's Pi Day, 3.14, March 14th. <laughs> All right. So some creative agents have done that as well, either to do it twice a year, or if they miss Thanksgiving, they'll do it in the spring. Uh, you can purchase bulk pies at places like Costco or somewhere in your area. You can do a bakery. If you do a local bakery, that might be okay for if you start with a small group. But once you start to get a lot of production, you know, 40, 50 pies, 100 pies, that kind of thing. Costco is a great place to go because when I called around and checked it out, I and mean, they typically make like 500 to 1,000 pies a day. So they got a lot of pies that they can fill you up with. And if you pre-order, pre if you call them early, they'll not only do it, they'll put them aside, have them ready for you, put lids on, do all kinds of cool things to have them set ready for you to go. Uh, and they're inexpensive. They're only like about 10 bucks a pie, <laughs> maybe a little cheaper. Check your area. 
Uh, you set up a place, you want to have everybody come meet you. So you set up in your office, you could do this in your office, a title company, mortgage company, just a central location for people to come meet you over the course of say an hour or two hours, you give them a time frame to come in a little window. Uh, and by the way, that's a lot better than some people who drive around, you could start off with driving around if you only have 10 pies or maybe 20. But I just recently talked to some folks and they did 20 and it was a lot. They were exhausted by the end of the day. So it's a lot better if you can get people to come meet you. All right. You want to have your tribe come by uh, to visit. They can mingle with you, which is the number one reason they come, by the way. Okay. People miss this. Uh, yeah, I, I, when I talk to people about their Pi Day events, they always say, I don't understand why somebody drove an hour across town to pick up a $10 pie. And the answer is, they wanted to see you. It was not the pie, it was you. They wanted to meet you and see you again and shake your hand and give you a hug and see how you're doing and, and tell, them about, tell them about how they're doing. And maybe they have real estate they wanna talk about. It just gives them an opportunity to reconnect with you. And that's really cool. That's why this thing works so well. You can do uh, where you not only hand out the pie, but you can, you don't have to do this, but you can have drinks like hot chocolate or cookies or something to kind of uh, keep them around a little longer for a little more mingling, but that's up to you. Uh, again, it's super cheap. It's probably about 10 bucks a pie or less, or maybe a little more. It depends on the pie, but it's probably in that ballpark. So it's a pretty inexpensive event, right? If you had 25 people uh, that showed up for a pie, then that's about a $250 event but you talk to more than 25 people. Remember we talked about before it's the invitation. You probably could have contacted as many as uh, 125 to 250 people to get those 25 people to show up. And now you got 250 people happy with you, thinking about you, maybe sending you some referrals, all from this rather inexpensive event. Uh, and again, there you go. I want to remind you only about 10% of the invitees accept uh, and it's more about that reconnection, but all the people love the invitation. I'll give you one more quick example. I talked to a gal. Uh, she sent out a thousand invitations. She knows a lot of people, been in business a long time. She had a big sphere. She sent out a thousand invitations to pick up a pie. What percentage of the people, how many people actually came by to pick up the pie? You know, how many people RSVP'd? By the way, you got to do that first to make sure you know how many order. About 100. She told me it was right around 100. So it was about 10% of the folks actually got the pie, but she was able to reach out to 1,000. That's the power of these events. Easy, easy conversation and invite, multiple contacts. The invitation is the power. Uh, super easy and fun thing to do. All right. So let's go into the Q&A, the uh, questions. Uh, comments, brainstorming, what do you got out there? What do you think? And if you have questions, comments, or ideas, go ahead and uh, write them into the chat section. Let's mastermind. I want to hear your thoughts. Have you done events? Do you want to do events? What do you think about this idea? Can you see how this strategy could double your referral closings? Or do you think it, it's hooey? Have you tried it? It didn't work. Let me know that too. Type your thoughts into the chat or the comments section. And it can be on any referral idea. We're talking about events today, but if you have a different concept you'd like us to chat about on um, referrals from your past clients and sphere of influence, go ahead and put those into the chat. And while we're waiting for that, I just want to show you, you got to get into that chat. Here's another great comment that came over from Donna, Donna Chase. Uh, she's a great top agent and she, um, She's in there and she made a comment about where she's from and so forth. But she also mentioned towards the bottom here that the best referral idea I've heard but not done was to have an annual gathering for past clients and their families and friends. And then she goes on, she says, the best of which, the best event she's heard of was a rodeo, <laughs> a rodeo in a very public location within her market area. And she said it was a huge winner for that agent. So uh, you got to get in the mastermind, change, uh, exchange ideas with people. Be sure to participate. Uh, these great ideas are out there from some very smart, powerful people. All right, let's go back up and see if we've got any questions or comments uh, out there in the uh, mastermind. Let's check and see what we got today. Kim, do we have any questions? So we have a new member named Steph Shepard. 
And Steph commented about a seasonal front door decorating contest. And I asked her for more information and I haven't heard back, but this is a new one. I haven't heard of that idea before. Wow. What a great idea. So uh, one of the folks that's with us today, thank you so much. I think it was Steph. Thank you so much for joining us. She mentioned that there's this great idea to have a seasonal front door contest where people are decorating their front doors like for, Christ for Christmas or for, um, I assume for any event, be for Halloween or uh, even Valentine's Day. I'm sure there are a lot of different events, <laughs> but you would, uh, you have, they take, a, I assume they would take a picture of their front door and send it out to you. And you can, like I said before, maybe on the, the uh, Halloween costumes, you could post it on your Facebook and have people vote on the best one, or you could just make an opinion of what's best. Uh, I assume that's how it works. It sounds pretty cool. I think that's a great idea. Thank you for bringing that to us. She did respond. So she said, this is something that I have participated in and would like to try to coordinate. Invitation was given out before the holiday season. Deadline was the end of December. Photo submissions for entries, gift card prize for the winner. This could be done for fall, holidays, 4th of July, spring and summer, et cetera. What a great idea. Yeah, that's a fantastic idea uh, and so easy to run, right? Uh, except for the cost of picking the gifts, it's pretty inexpensive. It's just, almost zero cost. And by the way, on gifts, I'll give you kind of a bonus idea there if you do the contest. Uh, one idea is to have one grand prize and to have that go out something really big like an iPhone. But, you know, that's real expensive. Yeah, you'll get a lot of participation, but you'll probably get participation from people you really don't want. You know, they don't really care about you. Um, however, uh, another way to do it, if you're going to do that, is to have a grand prize, a first prize, maybe a second or third place as well. Uh, one of the folks that uh, we really like listening from, she has an idea of coming out with not one, but say 20 prizes. They're all the same. They're very low cost, maybe five to $10 a piece. Uh, but the, her concept there is she'll have multiple winners. So instead of just having one person who's happy and excited, she'll have 20 people who are happy and excited. Uh, and she gets a lot of participation. It's the same cost or maybe even lower in this example. And uh, it works really well for her. So think about that if you're going to do contests or giveaways. All right. Do we have any other questions? Mm -mm. All right. Cool. Well, that, that was a great point. I'm really excited to hear about that idea of the door, front door decorating. What a neat idea. All right. Let's hop back in. And here we go. So again, thank you for uh, walking through with us today. Now, if you liked what you heard, I have a friend who could benefit from these calls. Tell them about the referral mastermind group, uh, invite them to join us. And the easiest thing for them to do is just go over to referralmastermindcall.com. Just go to referralmastermindcall.com. Tell them to go there. They can sign up for free. There's no cost. And uh, when they do that, they'll put in their name and their email address. And what will happen is they'll get notified when we have these events that they can come and join us and, and get in our mastermind. Uh, and they'll also be immediately redirected into the mastermind so they can participate, sign up and um, put in their information to be part of the group and see everybody else that's in there. All right. You know, this was a lot of fun today. I really appreciate you being here. I hope you'll join us for our next mastermind call, which will be next Friday. It'll be the same time, same place. And we're going to go over another concept for how to double your referral closings. Now, if you have additional questions about our program sponsor, who is the Referral Masters Group inside of eXp Realty, go back to the agent who invited you to this call, and they're going to be happy to answer your questions. Now, if you want to talk to me one-on-one uh, -on -one about setting up or improving your referral program, you can schedule a Zoom call with me at freemastermindcall.com. That is a free call at freemastermindcall.com. So write that down. And I'll look forward to chatting with you. All right. Um, this has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for joining me today for our referral mastermind call. Keep moving forward. Bye.